MRIs of the prostate have been in the news lately as a new tool in the arsenal against prostate cancer. I'm Dr. Linda Harrison from Diagnostic Imaging Centers, and today I'm going to spend a little time talking about MRI prostate, who should have it, and how exactly it's done. So if we talk about prostate cancer, it's a common disease. One in seven men will be affected by prostate cancer in their lifetime. But prostate cancer is a little bit different. There are some prostate cancers that are not going to harm the patient. You can have prostate cancer, live with it for many years, and it will never spread, never cause problems to the patient. There are other prostate cancers, though, that can be deadly, can spread, and can cause um, significant problems for the patient. Our job and what we're trying to do is trying to distinguish those prostate cancers, those prostate cancers that may threaten your life. Those are the ones we want to find. Screening for prostate cancer for years has been done by a couple of methods. The first is the prostate specific antigen test, the PSA blood test that many men start having at the age of 50. And again, we do advocate having screening with that PSA test um, starting at the age of 50 or earlier depending on your family history. They correlate that prostate, um, that test, that blood test, with a, a physical exam where they actually try to examine the prostate, the surface of the prostate with a physical exam, the digital rectal exam. So both of those are the primary tools we have of screening for prostate cancer. If you have an elevated PSA, if that blood test comes back abnormal, uh, the next thing that might be done is a prostate biopsy. These are generally done by urologists um, using ultrasound as a guide, and they're basically blind biopsies. So they're just biopsying the prostate randomly, looking for evidence of prostate cancer. So that's the first test that's done. There are a certain group of patients, though, that are going to have that biopsy result come back as negative, and they're still going to have an abnormal PSA blood test. What do those patients do? What are their options? The options are you can re-biopsy the prostate just as you did before, again using that ultrasound technique where they basically sample the entire prostate in different, in different sextants, six, pro, six prostate biopsies usually on each side. But again, this isn't a guided biopsy. They're not looking at something anatomically and saying, oh, that looks abnormal, let's biopsy it. Very different than the biopsies, say, that we do for a woman with well, screening for breast cancer. Those biopsies are directed to something anatomic. So we're kind of heading towards that direction with men and prostate cancer. An MRI of the prostate, done both without and with contrast, can help us look for that cancer in the prostate that is clinically significant, that has the potential to threaten the life. So what we do is we examine the prostate with different parameters. You might hear it term a multi-parametric scan. And that, well, all that means is we're looking at three different features of the prostate using MRI. It's a pretty long test, takes about 30 to 40 minutes, and we do inject an IV contrast agent for most patients. And we look at three different types of images of the prostate, and this is really helping us find cancers that tend to be clinically significant. So we can do that test first if you have an abnormal uh, PSA level and your bi biopsy came back negative. We can do this test with MRI and help guide um, the biopsy to the most appropriate part that might yield a cancer diagnosis. This is really exciting news. It's advancing our care for patients with prostate cancer. It's helping patients decide what they need to do, helping to guide treatment. So we really are enthusiastic about this new technique. We offer it at our facilities, and we're happy to talk with you more if you have questions. This is Dr. Linda Harrison. Hope we've answered your questions about MRI of the prostate.